Hey everybody, welcome back. Happy Friday. Hope your morning is getting off to a good start. We are going to talk about how to eat better, not less. All right, this was a topic that has really come up for me recently as I've been working with some newer clients and as I've been talking with people about their health goals and their health challenges, it's really become apparent to me that um, there's, a, there's a mentality shift that needs to happen when we start to upgrade our nutrition to more whole foods, more plant foods, and with that shift, we can start thinking differently about needing to eat less or more and um, good, better, best. So we're gonna kind of talk about quality over quantity and really show you a way that you can let go of portion control and calorie counting and all of that sort of stuff. You don't need it anymore when you shift to a more whole foods, plant-based way of eating. So we're gonna dive into that today. If this is your first time seeing these videos, welcome. My name's Danielle. I do these videos live inside of our free Facebook group called Healthy Living with Danielle Dinkelman, so come and join us if you're not inside of our group yet. Um, you can also see these videos on YouTube and the Instagram TV, so wherever you're joining me from, I appreciate you spending just about 10 or 15 minutes with me today to learn a little bit more about how to upgrade your nutrition, how to prioritize self-care, and how to take charge of your habits, because I really believe once we understand how to do those things and once we start putting these things into practice, this whole healthy living thing can get easier and it can even be fun and enjoyable and you can get the results you're looking for. So, thanks for joining me today. Um, I'm gonna share kind of four things with you today. Number one, I wanna dive into um, what that old mentality is and why we do need it if we are choosing to eat the standard American diet. Um, and then number two, we're gonna talk about this new mentality that you can start looking through a new lens as you're upgrading your nutrition of instead of calorie counting, what are we gonna be looking for instead in our food choices? And then number three, I wanna share with you a really simple list of the foods that you can trust and that you can really eat to your heart's desire and until you feel full and satisfied. And then number four, we're going to dive into even the plant-based foods that you might wanna be more careful about and eat more in moderation um, and that it is possible to overeat on. So we're gonna dive into this whole idea of overeating, all right? So let's start with number one, this old mentality, this need to um, have portion control. Um, that was something that was actually taught a lot in the nutrition courses in my health and wellness coaching. Now, I went through a lot of health and wellness coaching to learn how to help people make changes and how to change habits, all that sort of thing. But I, I kind of created my own curriculum as far as um, nutrition education goes, and that's where I really dove into the E. Cornell certification um, under Dr. Campbell uh, that really teaches plant-based nutrition. So it was interesting for me to see the contrast that over here, we don't, talk, we don't ever talk about portion control, and over here, it's a big deal. So I just, I know that it, that idea is so pervasive that if you wanna lose weight or you wanna feel better, um, you wanna improve your nutrition, that portion control used to have to be a part of that picture. Let me teach you why you don't need it. Um, the reason we needed it with the standard American diet is because it's, um, all of the foods in the standard American diet, we have a lot of processed foods full of oils and sugars. We have a lot of animal-based foods. We have a lot of dairy, a lot of chicken and beef and fish. All of these foods are high in fat. Now, per gram, if you look at a gram of fat compared to a gram of protein or a gram of carbohydrate, one gram of fat has nine calories. One gram of protein or one gram of carbohydrate only has four calories. So there is more usable energy packed into a gram of fat than there is in protein and carbohydrate. So when we eat foods and predominantly eat foods that are high in fat, they are naturally going to be what we would say more calorie dense, okay? You have, you have the same amount, a gram over here, a gram over here, but if it's a gram of fat, the, the energy that's packed into that same package is higher more than twice as much. Do you see what where I'm going with this? So 
if we simply choose foods that are lower in calorie density, density, which tend to be foods that are lower in fat, then we can start to trust our hunger and our satiety because we're eating food that is kind of a normal and a lower calorie density. It's not inflated. So I hope that makes sense. I'm gonna put a couple images um, that you can take a look at along with this video. So take a look in the comments in the description below and take a look at some things that I'm gonna put in there that's really gonna give you some visuals of understanding calorie density if that is still a new concept to you. It's really, really important to start to understand. Um, what else did I wanna say about this? So, okay, another thing about highly processed foods and about animal foods. Um, they are more calorie dense also because they don't have as much bulk that will fill you up that is actually that fiber that is found only in the plant kingdom, my friends. There is no fiber in highly, highly processed refined foods and there is absolutely no fiber by definition in animal foods. Fiber is only found in the plant kingdom. Fiber fills up our stomachs. It also feeds our microbiome, but it does not have any calories. Our body does not actually absorb and use fiber necessarily as, you know, building blocks in the rest of our body, but it does, it aids our digestion, of course, as you know, and it fills us up. So can you, can you see how if you eat food that has no fiber in it, it's gonna, the calorie density is gonna go up and we're not getting full on it as quickly. So we're gonna eat more and more to feel full and inadvertently we're consuming more and more calories than we really need. To me, that is the definition of overeating, okay? Over here in the plant kingdom, you don't really need to worry about that as much because the fiber is there in those whole plant foods. They are filling you up and for, for a less, a lower calorie count, if that makes sense. Um, so it's really important to take a look at fiber. Another important thing to take a look at is water. So I'm going to go over, I'm going to go down to number two on my list to talk about today. Let's, let's focus on this whole plant food area for a minute. So not only are these whole plant foods rich in fiber, so that lowers the calorie density. The other thing that it has, um, especially when you're in the fruits and the vegetables, is a lot of water content, okay? Water, again, fills up our stomach. It, it has mass to it, but does water have calories? No, it doesn't, okay? So again, we're filling up, we're feeling full and satisfied because these foods have fiber and they have water, both of which are devoid of calories. So it's really, it's really an awesome, simple way to start looking at the food choices that you're making, that you can really trust these types of foods to fill you up and to not have you consuming more and more calories than you will actually use. You don't need to do that. Alrighty, so let's go, um, okay, I think that's, yeah, that's mostly what I wanted to say. Um, what about just this idea, I guess really this whole idea of eat better, not less. You really can, when you get away from the animal products and the processed foods and you're really focused on whole foods and plant foods, that it's now it's just a question of quality, right? Instead of quantity. You don't need to really think about quantity anymore um, when you're filling up your plate. You're just looking at the quality of the foods you have. And to me, and hopefully you're, you're starting to see this too, high quality food is not over here. It's over here. It's the whole plant foods. Okay. So now let's go on to number three. So the foods you can trust and that you can really eat as much as you want, um, are, are, the, are there's, there's four food groups you can really start to think about, okay? And these are gonna be these high quality foods that you can trust. They are fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes, okay? Again, I'm gonna have some uh, graphs and pictures in the comments below, and you'll see that those four food groups, and um, it kind of breaks it into a fifth one. You can think of tubers, so like your sweet potatoes and really all kinds of potatoes. These all have a wonderfully low calorie density, but they, again, they're high in fiber, high in water, so you can trust these foods because when we're choosing those foods, we can start to trust our stomach. We can start to trust 
our hunger signals and our satiety signals because it's actually going to be filling our stomach up. It's going to be tripping those stretch receptors around the, the layers of our stomach that is gonna tell us, okay, we're good, we're full. Um, and we, we can trust that we're not gonna be overeating. We're not gonna be getting more calories than we need. Okay, so um, let's go take a look. Um, let's take a look at number four. So plant-based foods that you can overeat on. There is such a thing, okay? Um, so that's why you can still, you can go vegan, you can go completely plant-based, and you can still be really unhealthy, you can still be really overweight um, because not all plant-based foods are created equal. That, that qualifier of it being a whole food is absolutely crucial. So perfect example is sugar and oil, right? These are both plant-based foods. They come from sugar cane or they come from a sugar beet or they come from an olive or an avocado. These things come from the plant kingdom, but they have been so processed and refined that they still are now devoid of their natural water content and devoid of their natural um, fiber content as well as the other macronutrients. So we're left with this highly, highly processed, highly refined food that is extremely calorie dense. Okay, so letting go of the oils, letting go, go of the sugars, even if it's in the plant kingdom, is going to be key to getting in that lower calorie density and choosing foods that you're gonna be able to trust and to get full on without being worried about that, okay? Other plant-based foods that you need to watch out for that are still high in calorie density are dried fruits. So um, dates, Cran, uh, not cranberries, but craisins, raisins. Um, boy, we've bought packets of like dried apple chips that are delicious, but I know that I can overeat on these. And why is that? Are you starting to see a trend here? It still has all of its fiber, right? Because it's still like that slice of apple. But what did they take away? They took away the water. That's by definition, that's what a dried fruit is. You're taking that water out. So when you take that calorie, that calorie void mass away from the food, you are creating a more calorie dense food that you can overeat on. So watch out for that. Um, and let's see, let's go to nuts and seeds. Um, so nuts and seeds, totally healthy for you, very, very good for you. There are so many nutrients in those nuts and seeds. In fact, I highly recommend that you include a serving of walnuts, you know, every day and that you include flaxseed or chia seed uh, very regularly because we're getting those healthy fats in our diet, which is fantastic. But you can't binge on these things, okay? Um, chia pudding, not necessarily um, a great idea. Um, snacking on a cup or two of mixed nuts, not necessarily a good idea. Because naturally, these nuts and seeds are um, so, uh, they're just like these tiny little packages of everything that it takes to then go and grow an almond tree, right? Um, or uh, so they are very naturally high in calories as well. So those are a calorie dense, a high calorie density uh, plant food. So a quarter cup of walnuts a day is fine. Um, a couple tablespoons uh, of flaxseed is fine. It's great. Do that, but don't go nuts with it. Yes, that was an intentional. All right, last one to watch out for are breads. Even the most um, wholesome, whole grain bread you can find, you are still working with a food that has been dried, it's devoid of water, and ground down, and it's just in this more processed state. So in those foods you can trust, when you think of whole grains, I really want you to focus on, on intact whole grains. Um, so oats, um, wheat berries and, you know, turning that into a breakfast cereal, that sort of thing. Those are, those are great. You can really trust those, but breads you, you might want to watch out for. So again, you're going to see this calorie density chart that I'm going to put down below, but you can start to just try to hang out in that lower calorie density space and you can really start to trust your hunger signals again. So it's pretty exciting to start to eat this way because it's so much simpler. You don't have to count calories and you can still get some results in your weight loss and in your feeling better and your energy levels. So 
that's all for today. All right. I hope that makes sense. Maybe some of you are brand new to this. This is super crucial to start to understand. Maybe some of you have heard all of this before. Thanks for tuning in anyway. I think that's always helpful for you to learn a little bit of how to teach this to other people because people will start to ask you as you eat this way more and more of why it works and why why you do it. So um, again, if you're not in our uh, free private Facebook group yet, go ahead and find us Healthy Living with Danielle Dinkelman. I'd love to see you there um, or follow my YouTube channel under the same name and I will see you next week. Feel free to reach out to me. I would love to know what challenges and struggles you're having as you're trying to lose weight, feel better, um, as you're really on this health journey. I would love to hear what you need so that I can craft more videos like this that help you reach your goals. So I will see you next week. Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and we'll see you soon.